Okay, this video is going to look at some more skills in Tinkercad, uh, duplicating and repeating, aligning, and grouping. To do that, we're going to build a bookshelf. The first thing I'll do is I'll drag out a box, and I'll start resizing it into something that resembles the basic bookshelf shape. Uh, I can type in my numbers for the different dimensions in millimeters, or I can drag the corners or the black boxes uh, to size the box. Next, I'm going to make the bays for the shelves. So I'm going to drag out a box that is a hole, although I could always make a solid into a hole in the properties box. I'm going to drag down the top of that box and uh, to get the dimension I want. Then I'll use the lifting cone to raise it up a bit and kind of uh, having a look at, at the dimensions. It looks pretty correct, but now I want to align it so I'm going to select both shapes, go to the Align button, and then you can see the different black dots and lines tell me where the shapes will align to. And then the black dot turns gray because it's already aligned uh, along that line. Now I'll select the hole, and with, I like to use the arrow keys to uh, move it into the other shape. Using the arrow keys means uh, you have a little more control over um, how something moves. When I zoom in I can double check the spacing and I can sort of see into the bookshelf and see how my hole is lining up there. Now I'm going to hit the duplicate and repeat button with the hole selected. I'm going to use the raising cone to raise it the amount that looks about right and then without clicking anywhere else, if I click that same duplicate and repeat button, it does the same um, action that I just did automatically. And I had been thinking I would close the top of this bookshelf, but I actually kind of like the effect of having it open. I'll select all the holes and the solid, and then I'll click on the group button, and uh, they sort of carve out the shelf bays. I'm going to make the bookshelf uh, its eventual color of brown. And now I have my bookshelf. The next thing is to make books. And to populate the whole bookshelf with books would uh, take quite a while. So I'm going to have a bit of a shortcut. So here I'm resizing the first book. I can uh, zoom in on that feature. And I'm just trying to get the right size, more or less. Here I notice the book is a bit too big, and so I'm going to hold shift as I shrink from the top there, and it's going to shrink the whole book proportionally. So holding shift and changing the size of something changes it proportionally, the entire um, object. The book is selected, and I'm going to click that same duplicate and repeat button. I'm going to move the book over, and then I'm going to click the button a few more times and automatically duplicate that move I just made. Now I'm going to go through and make this set of books look uh, different from each other. I'm going to play with their sizes and colors and have five different looking books. Okay, now I have my five books and I'm going to shift click on each one. Hold shift and click. That will select all of them together. And then again, the duplicate and repeat button. I'll use my arrow key to uh, move the books over. And now, again, I want to make sure to not click anywhere else except for the duplicate and repeat button. Uh, and it'll populate that shelf. If I do click off um, on the work plane or somewhere, then it will sort of forget that duplicate move that I just did. Um, and so you'd have to, to redo it. So now um, I want to select all of the books. And so I'm actually going to use that arrow key again to move the bookshelf out of the way so I can just draw a box around only the books. Duplicate and repeat. Use the raising cone to lift those books up. And looks about right. And I'll hit that button a couple more times. And now uh, I've only made the five books, but 
because of that, that button, I'm able to, to populate the whole bookshelf. One thing I'm noticing is that the books seem kind of skinny compared to the bookshelf. So I'm going to again move the bookshelf out of the way so I can select only the books. I'm going to use the black box just to stretch them out a bit and make them wider and a bit more proportional to the bookshelf. Now I want them to not all look so similar and be in the same pattern. So I'm going to go around and just click books. Um, I'm holding shift and then clicking four or five books. And again, it treats those four or five books as a group. And then I can change their color all at once. The last thing I'll do is I, I think I'm going to add a, a, a fancy touch to the back of the bookshelf. So I'm going to drag on a box shape. I'm going to size it so it's the same as the top of the bookshelf. Again, I'd like to use the arrow key to when I can to move things and, and have more control. So that's a nice match. And then I'm going to get um, a round roof shape and I'm going to eventually turn it into a hole and sort of punch a hole and make a kind of an arch feature to the uh, back there. Um, I'm using that align tool and I'm noticing that the round roof shape is uh, a little too long so I'm going to have to shorten that. I just eyeballed that and in aligning I noticed that the dot is gray and that means that I actually aligned it um, perfectly. So now I select all that stuff and I group it and now I've got a nice feature. Um, I thought for a second of adding more to it but um, decided against that. So then again my arrow key, I'm just going to scoot the bookshelf over and now I've got um, a bookshelf. I've got to readjust it a little bit here. But uh, So those are some uh, tips that I think are pretty useful in all kinds of contexts. Have fun with them.